Good day crew and welcome to another episode. This episode is going to be a little bit short this week because I'm quite rushed for time. So let's jump straight into it. This episode is going to cover the southern end of the bay and I'll start at the anchorage that's between Karagara, Maclay Island and Lamb Island. That's a great little anchorage. You can shelter there from almost any weather in reasonable comfort. Can get a little bit blurry if it's coming due east or due west, but that's pretty rare in the bay. And there's a lot of other things about anchoring up there for the night that makes it really attractive. Now first of all, I'll just mention it's got a good bottom for holding. I've never had any problem getting an anchor to hold on the bottom there. And it's right next to the salt works. That's the X you can see flashing on the screen. That marks the position of the old salt works. If you've been around the bay for any length of time, you know that around the old salt works in prawning season, that's where you go to catch prawns, or one of the many spots in the bay where you go to catch prawns. I'll just turn on the depth shading so that you can see how much water is around in that area. And the legend for the depth is down at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, so you can see what colour is what depth. The deep hole that's there where the arrow is flashing. I reckon that would be the dew hole where you catch dewfish down in that area, or supposedly. I haven't stayed down there in the trailer boat, but I used to go there and anchor up there a bit in the bigger boat when the weather wasn't real good. And I used to go out fishing in the tender, and the tender didn't have a sounder, so I just had to guess where the hole was, judging from what people had told me. And I was fishing a bit to the west of where this hole was showing on the bathymetry. And I never caught any Jews down there. I just thought it was maybe none there. But now that I've got the good bathymetry of the area, I think the dew hole is probably a bit to the east of where I was fishing. So if you're down there and you do anchor up for the night, there's a spot to try for fishing. As for anchoring overnight, the area with the blue line along it here is where I used to anchor in the big boat. I don't recall there being any moorings there at that time. There were a few boats I thought they were anchored. They may have been a mooring or two there, but back in the day, I think they were all anchored there, same as us. However, there's a lot of moorings there now. I guess that reflects the people that are living on the island that own their boats. But there's still plenty of room to anchor, particularly if you're anchoring a trailer boat. You shouldn't have any problem finding a spot. Just keep in mind that a mooring is usually fairly heavy chain, and it's going to be more vertical in your line, so when that boat turns, it's going to turn in a much smaller circle than you will with an anchor out. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out just where to anchor in relation to the other boats. And one of the main incentives that may encourage you to overnight there in a trailer boat in prawning season is that you're right near the prawning grounds. If you wake up early enough, you can beat everyone else there. You'll have to get up pretty early because from what I've seen of the prawning grounds, they are busy. I've never been prawning myself. I keep saying for every year that I'll have to try it this year, but I never seem to find the time for it. Perhaps soon I will, but in the meantime, there's a mark up here. I've heard you can get prawns up towards the eastern end of Karagara, supposedly north of the uninhabited area of the island, closer to Karagara than Lamb. So I'll put a mark there, roughly, in the position where you should be looking for prawns if you're looking at that end. But the main area where they seem to be getting prawns is down the other end near the salt works. And I've dropped a mark there. Look around that area. Now, you're not going to go to that mark and expect to find prawns, but go to that mark and search around the area in prawning season and you'll probably pick some up. But having said that, in prawning season you don't need the mark because there's that many other boats there that you won't have any problem finding it. The only problem you're going to have is getting in amongst it. One of the main reasons I haven't been prawning yet because I've got a half cabin boat. It's not really suited for casting a prawn net and driving it by myself, managing the prawn net and not hitting anyone else would be quite a challenge. But anyway, if you're down there and you get into it early enough, you might get there and get some prawns before anyone else does. There's also a couple of fishing marks here. I don't know how good they are. I picked them up off the internet. I used to fish that area of deeper water just to the southwest of the salt works when I was there in the big boat. Pick up the odd fish there. I never found it a great fishing spot. Not as good as some of the others around the central area of the bay. But then I never really 
got a feel for fishing the southern end of the bay, not the same as I did the centre. And I do know other people that catch fish there regularly and catch really good fish there. So that one's probably just down to me not having the experience in that general area. Now just talking about the southern end of the bay in general or anywhere in the bay in general where you've got channels to go through, you'll notice on the Navionics charts there is a dotted line or dashed line. I've got the arrows pointing to it there. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can zoom in and have a look at it. If you follow that line, you're always in the deeper part of the channel. Not that a trailer boat needs that much water to float in. If you tip your engine up, you can get through some amazingly shallow sections, as witnessed by my passage from Day's Gutter up through that channel down to the Blue Hole. That's no longer navigable, but I managed to make it through there by tipping the engine up in the really shallow spots. So it is possible to get through some really shallow spots, but I just wanted to point out this line because a lot of people don't seem to know about it. If you stick to that dashed line where you're going through lots of channels, it takes you through the deepest area of the channel. I've been through a lot of the areas down in the southern part of the bay using that and not had a problem. As you can see in this view, there's a lot of islands down in the southern end of the bay and a lot of little channels in between them. And they make great anchorages for getting out of the weather. Also some good fishing in there. Although I haven't done as well down that end of the bay as I do up further in the cleaner water around the centre of the bay. I guess my fishing style is just more suited to that. But people do catch some really, really good fish down this end of the bay. So let's have a bit of a look at what's available in the way of anchorages there. And then I'll talk about some general spots you can anchor that aren't really marked anywhere. There's the anchorage that's known as a bedroom. That used to be a really popular spot. It may still be really popular. I didn't really like it that much because it was small and everyone sort of went there. You had a lot of boats crowded into a small area. I didn't like anchoring there because they're just too close together. So I'd generally go and find somewhere else to anchor when I was down there. It wasn't that hard. There's so many places around that you can anchor that you don't have to anchor where everyone else is. I know a lot of people seem to like that because everyone else is anchored there. They think it's a good spot, so they go along and anchor there themselves. I just prefer to be further away where I don't have to worry so much about swinging into someone or having them swing into me. It happens. I just prefer to avoid it if possible. I'm just turning the depth shading back on again so you can see what the depths are like all through that area. And as you can see from that, getting up into the bedroom is a bit of a challenge these days. I don't think it was that shallow back in the day. It may have been, but these water heights are all at astronomical low tide. So anything above zero tide is going to put more water there. So we'll say it's showing zero on the map. That is at a zero tide. So if you have low tide, it's 0.5 a metre. You've got 0.5 a metre of water over that. If you're on a high tide with two metres, You've got two metres of water over that. So it's often not as bad as it looks on the map, but just something to bear in mind that bedroom is a little bit tricky to get in and out of these days, just looking at the map. As I say, I haven't been in there since I had the big boat and I only went in there once, turned around and went back out again because it was just too crowded for my liking. I'm actually thinking about it, it's a long time ago. I think I might have anchored there for that night and left again in the morning and never went back because it was so crowded. Doesn't really matter anyway. Point is, I was only in there once. And just while I'm in this area, this is another prawning spot that I have heard about, and that is just inside the Jumpin' Pin Bar. A fellow told me many years ago now that he used to prawn just inside the Jumpin' Pin Bar, and you get a lot of bay prawns in there. That's a smaller variety of prawns. I haven't tried it. I haven't even sounded the area to know if they're there in prawning season. But just passing that on, in case it's of any interest to those of you that can prawn, have the right sort of boat to prawn out of, you could have a look on your sounder and see if there's anything there if you're passing through that area. We're just moving over to the area around Kanipa Point on Russell Island. There's this channel up there between the islands, between the tip of Russell Island, and a couple of islands, I don't think they've got a name. But anyway, you can see the channel there. I've got a blue line flashing over it. I've been up that in the tinny, and you can catch the odd flathead up there. 
Again, didn't find it a brilliant fishing spot, but you could catch a few flathead and come home with a feed. I think you get through there in a trailer boat. You just need to be a bit careful. I had no trouble in the tinny. That was a tender for the big boat. So if you're in the area somewhere, you might want to have a look at. But really what I wanted to show you around this area was the anchorages. In this shot, I've got arrows pointing to all the boats that are anchored up in this general area. That doesn't mean they're the only spots that you can anchor, just that they're the spots other boats are anchored in or have anchored in recently. Navionics records the AIS position of the boats and puts it on the map. But anywhere along that area should be fine. When I had the big boat, I'd just motor along. When I found a nice looking spot, I'd just drop the anchor there. Had no trouble at all. I'll just point out that the Navionics map shows an obstruction in that channel. I don't recall ever having any issues when I took the tender up through there. I don't know whether the obstruction wasn't there at the time or whether it's deep enough that I didn't notice it. I didn't have a sounder on to see anything on the bottom. Just letting you know it's there if you do decide to take your boat up there looking for some flathead, just to be cautious there in that area. Another spot that I found to be a good anchorage is the slipping sands. If you've got young kids there, they can have a lot of fun climbing up the sand dunes and sliding back down or jumping down, rolling down, whatever turns them on. It also wears them out so they sleep well that night, and that's never a bad thing. And just to mention one more specific anchorage, there's Blakesley's up here a bit further north. That's sort of east of Fitchy Mudlow Island on Stradbroke. That's a really nice anchorage, or at least it was last time I went there. I don't believe it would have changed. You can get off on the beach there. I think there's a bit of a picnic area there. And good holding bottom, as I recall. And just falling back to an overview map of the southern area of the bay, there's heaps of anchorages there. You'll find boats that are anchored up all through any of those channels. They just get out of the main channel off to the side somewhere and drop their anchor and they're quite comfortable. There's some areas there where I have nosed the boat into the shore and I'm talking, say, my little Haynes Hunter, that was a 15-foot boat. I'd nose it into the shore and the back of the boat where the transducer was would be in three metres of water. That's how steeply it drops off. Some of them drop off almost sheer from the island to deeper water. So just have a look around, go cautiously if you're not sure, and you should find deeper water in a lot of areas, but you can get in close to the island, well out of the channel. You will get rocked as boats speed past, but you won't be subject to any of the weather effects. And some of those spots you can find some decent fishing as well. A couple of times I've been there, I've seen boats that have actually put some stakes in on the island, tied themselves to the island front and rear, and had a tent pitched on the island. Never done that myself, but it was a novel idea. Just make sure if you do that, you leave enough slack in your ropes to account for the rise and fall of the tide. And of course, that you've got enough deeper water close into the island, that you can do that. As I said, some of them drop off almost sheer into deeper water. I am under some time pressure this week to get some work done, so I'm afraid that's all I've got time to cover in this video. It's giving you a pretty decent idea of the southern end of the bay. So many possibilities for anchoring. Lots of areas where you can get mud crabs or fish around those islands. So if the weather's bad and you want to get out on the boat and have an overnight trip, the southern end of the bay is perfect for that. I'm running a little bit behind schedule on the work that I have done, so I think the next video is also going to be off the water. But I have an idea for a topic that I'd like to talk about for that. Until then, good fishing.